Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're talking about some stick welding as well as some MIG welding on the same job. I lucked up and I got some real gravy work. Uh, it's not often you get metal that's already prepped, cleaned, pressed in, tacked, ready to weld. And uh, so I thought, well, normally I would just MIG, MIG this stuff up and be done with it, but uh, because I already had the stick welder hooked up, I thought it would make a good video to run a few of them with a stick wire. Uh, a stick, stick machine, that is. A tip for you first, though. We had to clean some hot rolled mill scale because some of this, these parts are going to black oxide finishing and uh, that's not going to stick to the hot roll. So, so my machinist friend found an, a really good uh, way to remove that. Grinding wheels make two rough of scratches. Sand and disc load up, but this Norton wheel is called Rapid Strip. It's blue. It works really good. You can go to my website and see the part number and a picture of it if you, uh, if you, can't, if you couldn't read that. All right, so we're going to light up on this thing first with a stick uh, machine. And before we do that, I want to take some dry runs here because I'd like to go all the way around this thing without stopping. I don't want to have to stop, chip, make tie-ins. It's always better if you can make it all the way around. But it's not that easy on something like this because it's not like it's in a vice and I can just walk around it. Uh, I can only get to half of it really well. So, you know, most people, it seems, uh, chuck a rod up naturally uh, like this. But that's not really that comfortable for getting around a round part. You can do it, but you kind of have to cock your wrist up and uh, put you in a little bit of a bind. And it just doesn't work that well for keeping a decent rod angle going all the way around that thing. You see, you can do that. You can walk around it. But I'm cocked. Got my elbow up in the air. My wrist is kind of uncomfortable. This is a little bit better. This is a little bit better. And this is even better. So you put it the other way. And now all i got to do is just twist my wrist and see how the rod angle stays more consistent that way and what's even better is if I put it up in the end and then just bend it get it all the way up in the tip and kick it back and now it's just really really a lot easier I'm comfortable all I have to do is pay attention as I move and, and move my wrist around a little bit and I hopefully I can make it all the way around this thing with some somewhat of a decent rod angle see I, I don't want to do this okay let's let's light up on one here they're already tacked with MIG all you got to do with a 7018 is pretty much drag it. I inevitably always do some motion, if nothing else, just because I get uncomfortable and shake a little bit. And it tends to work better for me if I do just some little bitty series of little ease or something because I'm going to shake anyway and kind of evens things out. So I'll clip it right here and then come on around the end so you won't have to wait on it. And come on around and tie in. Yes, there's a little bit of slag there, but everything's good and hot. It burns in pretty good. And so. That's the finished weld there. Pretty decent, nothing to write home about. And, you know, I need to practice. Now I'm getting ready to MIG weld. This is what we had. A nozzle full of spatter. you got to clean that junk out of there first. Not only will it clog the gas flow and uh, give you porosity, but it will eventually ground out to the contact tip and then your nozzle will be live and every time you touch, it will stutter because it shunts, it grounds out. So a Leatherman tool is like the handiest thing ever for MIG welding because it's almost as good as a set of MIG pliers for getting in that nozzle and getting that junk out of there and also for snipping wire so we get the last little bit of that out of there good to go now I like to have my MIG tip protruding just a little bit I find that gives me more arc force and just a better well I do not like to have it recessed way up in there like that I found that it's just harder to get a smooth arc and harder to get good penetration and everything so that's just me that's 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 my it looks like I'm kind of in the need of swapping out that contact tip there a little bit too. So for MIG welding here, I want to take a few dry runs. It's a little harder to get around this thing with the MIG gun. It doesn't have a, you know, you can't just change the angle like you can with the uh, stick. But I'm going to take a few dry runs around it and see if I can, see if I can do it without being in too much of a bind. And so here we go. We're pushing a little bit the puddle this time, this time around. Pushing versus pulling. Don't get all hung up on that. There are differences. I've done lots of testing, and, and yes, one of them penetrates slightly better than the other one sometimes, but we all know sometimes you've got to push, sometimes you've got to pull. Not a perfect world. So here's another one we're going to pull at this time. You can see those MIG tacks, MIG tacks are notorious for popping loose sometimes. It looked like one of them was kind of cold lapped on one side. Like I said, I can't complain. They were already tacked up and waiting for me to weld. This is the pulling action. I'm doing just a little series of cursive ease. I just That's like a, a habit that I've gotten into and can't seem to shake. And I'll clip it out and then we'll come back around here and tie into where we finished. Bada bing. We're done with that one. 
So the MIG welding uh, tends to look a little bit better and everything, but you know, sometimes your MIG machine is going to tear up, so it's good to be able to uh, have a stick machine and finish up a job if, if you're in a midway in a job. So here's the settings I use on this Millermatic old school 250. Uh, not that old, but you know, it's not digital or anything. And uh, the settings were basically, I'm using 035 wire, uh, 70S6, 7525 argon CO2, somewhere between 20 and 21 volts wire speed, somewhere around 275 to 300. For the stick, I was set at 133 amps, which seemed more like 120 just to me. I don't think the readout was that accurate. Uh, reverse polarity, electrode positive, and arc control set to max dig so that I didn't have have this, I didn't stick. I could lay that rod in there without sticking because that's what arc control does for you. Okay, once again, there's the, uh, there's a MIG and there's a stick. Both okay. Both nothing to write home about. I'm going to practice up and get better. But uh, here's the gravy job again. The question is, uh, a lot of people uh, take on jobs like this and, and, and don't have any idea how to price them. So here's a tip on how to price a job like this. For round welds, multiply the diameter times three to get a ballpark of the linear inches and then charge a buck an inch. That might seem a little bit high, and if it is, just go down to 75 cents an inch or 50 cents an inch or whatever what comes out right to you, but at least that gives you a, a way to figure the jobs without losing your butt, and uh, you can off the top of your head uh, quote a job and, and not lose money at a, at a dollar an inch. Of course, it's different all in different countries. You'll have to figure out what makes sense, but uh, this particular job, it, it was probably a little high, but uh, I, I don't think that that's exactly what I'm going to wind up charging. That's what I've done in the past. So that's it for today. Lots of random tips.